Hey there guys, welcome back to Ashmore Arboretum and today on the homestead we have a bit of an issue and I'm going to discuss this with you. These are my tomato plants. They're about eight foot tall but they're not really producing an awful lot of tomatoes. Now I have mostly heirloom varieties so number one I know they're not going to produce as prolifically as hybrid varieties. Uh, this is one of our marigolds my wife planted from seed. It's about four foot long right now. It's kind of in the way. But anyway, getting back to this, I'm noticing that a lot of our tomato plants are not producing like I think they should. We have 30 tomato plants here in this raised bed. Now, a lot of people might think that that's an awful lot for this um, three foot wide by 20 foot long raised bed, but it's not if you have the right type of soil. But, but, a lot of people this year are not having ample tomato production and I want to take a look at a few things that we can adjust and identify to see if we can boost our, the production of our tomatoes. Come over here and I'll show you a few things. <laughs> okay, I brought you guys in a little bit closer and I want to show you one of the first things we've done is I have ensured that we are pruned up from the bottom about 18 inches or so give or take some of these are a little bit shorter than that but that right there is to help prevent soil borne disease issues that occur through watering and rain you know when the rain hits the soil it's going to get a splash and it splashes up on the leaves and these tomatoes are notorious for getting um, soil borne illnesses and and pathogens and so the easiest way to prevent that is to prune these up. Like I said, these cages are five foot tall. But if you notice, these variety of, of tomatoes, these are Cherokee, um, Cherokee purples, I believe. They're not real big. This is telling me I have a deficiency of something. But what is it? Well, let's continue to look. Let's see here. All right. If you notice right here, I have some yellowing of the plants. That's a pretty good indicator on tomato plants at least that I am gonna be lacking potassium and I'm gonna be lacking phosphorus. And if we come down here a little bit and I'll come over this way and pan up, you can see these tomato plants right here are looking kind of sparse. So, how do we fix this? What are we gonna do? Well, there's a couple different methods you can use to, you know, add phosphorus and nit nitrogen and of course potassium back to the soil. You can do the chemical route with the uh, synthetic fertilizers, or we're gonna try the natural route first. And I try to keep my garden as organic as I possibly can. And if I can't maintain a completely organic garden that's when i'll start breaking down i'll start using uh, pesticides and herbicides and synthetic fertilizers to to control what i need to control to get my garden back into a manageable state we have a pretty poor production of tomatoes this year and i'm not really happy with what's going on but i'm not just going to sit back and let nature run its course i'm going to give it a helping hand so come with me inside and I'll show you what we're going to do to try to fix this issue. Okay guys, we're back in the house now. And the way we're going to add potassium back into our, our soil naturally is with banana peels. This is one of the best methods you can use. It's one of the cheapest methods you can use. I'm just going to stick these in my blender with two cups of water. We're going to put the lid on and we're going to pulse. Now, pardon me while this gets loud.
Now the reason you want to pulse this is because it breaks down, mechanically breaks down the majority of the, the peel. And that begins the process of leaching out the potassium that's naturally in the peel a lot quicker than if we were to just, you know, let the peels out there and decompose naturally. Okay, that's all we're gonna do there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take one of my core mason jars. I'm gonna take this off the stand, move it out of the way. And we are going to pour this concoction into quart mason jar. I'm going to rinse out my blender. We're going to use this to fill it up. Okay. Now, I'll grab a lid and a ring. And this does not need to be a new lid or a new ring. This, these are used lids. I'm gonna put it on. I'm gonna let this sit, this concoction sit, for two days before we go out there and put this in a, a watering can, fill it up with water, and um, sprinkle this around all of our tomato plants. Okay guys, it's been two days since we made up our uh, natural potassium fertilizer. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this entire quart jar. And I have a bucket of rainwater. We got some rain this week and I had a bucket under the downspout. I'm gonna use this bucket of rainwater, but I don't need all of it. I'm gonna pour some of this out here. about half of that in there. That'll work. Now I'm going to take this concoction. I'm just going to pour this into this five gallon bucket. Now we're going to stir this around. And now I'm going to use that to fill my watering can. Now because this banana peel was mechanically broken down prior to going into this water, it was able to leach out substantially more nutrients than if we were just to leave the banana peel whole, set it in the in the jar and just let it sit. Now I have this in my two gallon or so watering can. We go around and I'm gonna water the base of each one of these plants. Okay, now that I have gone around and I watered all of our tomato plants, like I said, we have 30 tomato plants here, and I also had enough left over, I went ahead and watered my pepper plants as well. I'm gonna do another video on showing how to deal with the magnesium deficiency and another video on dealing with the, uh, the phosphorus, but I'll, uh, I'll save that for another video so this one isn't 20 or 30 minutes long. But now, <clears throat> We have taken care of our, our potassium deficiency. This should help boost the, uh, the production, should help produce, um, boost the uh, plants, getting these tomatoes to turn ripe. And like I said, I'll do a couple more videos on how to amend the soil for the magnesium and the potassium as well, or the, the phosphorus as well. So. I hope you guys learned something. This is a natural technique of adding potassium back to the soil that is readily available and can be rapidly used by your plants. And if you did, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel, Ashmore Arboretum. And until next time, thanks for watching.